Vladimir Putin has hit back at new American sanctions by ordering the U.S. to cut staff at its diplomatic mission by 755 in Moscow's most aggressive move against Washington since the final years of the Cold War. Here's why this could impact Trump more than Putin himself. Nearly a thousand U.S. citizens working in diplomatic premises all over Russia will have to leave the country by September. The announcement came from President Vladimir Putin, no less. This is the toughest diplomatic move by Russia in the post-Soviet era, and it is in stunning contradiction to what United States President Donald Trump had in mind during his campaign when he repeatedly talked about the necessity of improving ties with Russia. What is even more unexpected, though, is the trigger the new sweeping American sanctions on Russia, coming as they did just weeks after President Trump and Vladimir Putin met at the G20 summit in Hamburg. Their meeting stretched well beyond the scheduled time, fueling speculation. Could this finally be the beginning of a new era of friendship between the two countries? Well, that was not to be. The political old guard and the deep state in America left no doubt about what they had in mind. The Congress lost no time in pushing for a new wave of anti-Russia sanctions, ostensibly for Moscow's alleged meddling in the 2016 presidential election and for the annexation of Crimea. What they could not explain, though, is why it was coming so late and so abruptly. The Crimea crisis happened in 2014 and has already been followed by sanctions by the European Union, the United States and other countries. That leaves the US election and Russia allegedly rigging it for Trump. For all the storm over months, not a shred of solid evidence has surfaced, but the controversy shows no sign of dying down. Evidently, Russia is not the only target of this sanctions bill. By voting for it, the Congress has directly aimed at the president, leaving him in a catch-22 situation. If he vetoes the sanctions, he lends credence to the charges that he is working for Russian interest. But if he ratifies the bill, he will end up endorsing a move that goes against his political agenda. And under President Trump, the United States will continue to hold Russia accountable for its actions. And we call on our European allies and friends to do the same. In a sign of our commitment, very soon President Trump will sign legislation to strengthen and codify the United States sanctions against Russia. For now, Trump has announced that he will sign the bill, sparking a sharp reaction from Moscow and betraying the growing conflict between America's president and its political institutions. Bureau Report, Beyond. Joining us from California this evening, Stephen Golub, uh, international affairs expert. Good evening, Stephen. Is Trump as much as, if not more, the target of these sanctions than Putin? Oh, yes, your, took, your question and your lead into the story took the words right out of my mouth. I think you have to put this in context with an analogy, a very hypothetical analogy to India and Pakistan. Imagine if your prime minister had for years and decades questionable financial ties with some very questionable interests in Pakistan who had uh, ties to the top of the Pakistan's government. Imagine if your, pres if your prime minister, who was criticizing every other world leader and every other country in the world, from China to the United Kingdom to the Pope, uh, was very, very deferential to Vladimir Putin. And imagine, mo uh, I'm, I'm sorry, was very, very deferential to the prime minister of Pakistan. And imagine if Pakistan, most of all, if Pakistan had interfered with your elections electronically, through press leaks, all sorts of ways at, in, that may have determined the outcome of the elections, but at least tainted them in all sorts of ways and was, it was in a position to do that in the future. 
Now, if uh, take that analogy away from India and Pakistan to Russia and the U.S., that's why our Congress, both Republicans and Democrats, have no confidence in Donald Trump because of these longstanding financial ties, the positions he's taken, his denying that Russia even interfered with our elections when it's absolutely clear to our intelligence agencies and everyone else, Republicans and Democrats, that he did. That's the position we're in, and that's why Congress has really tied his hands in this respect in dealing with Russia through our sanctions bill. So you're saying that even if there's not a shred of evidence of any wrongdoing, an American president cannot be seen as being friendly with the Russians, and so Donald Trump must be put in his place. <laughs> no, no, the, uh, good question, but there is more than a shred of, of wrongdoing. Uh, There's so many shreds, but just to pick one, Rush, uh, three top campaign officials for Donald Trump, uh, his son, his son-in-law, and the chairperson of his campaign last year, met with Russians who were promising incriminating evidence on Hillary Clinton. In effect, they were looking for ways, the Trump campaign officials were looking for ways to collude with Russia, include, and the promise of these materials said that they came from the Russian government. These top Trump campaign officials were looking for ways to collude with Russia mm. in terms of undermining the election. And there are many, many more examples I can cite, both direct and indirect, of possible cooperation with uh, Russia on the part of Trump and the Trump campaign. So it's really much more severe. There is much more than just a shred of evidence there. And where does this leave Donald Trump is a question that I'll have to wait for another day. Stephen, I'm completely out of time here, but thanks very much for joining us on Gravitas.